Art students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another video. And this one is another uh, action pose position of the week. It should be action pose position of the year because I haven't done one in a long time. So it's a long video, so I'm going to keep the intro short. And yeah, I think I say everything in the drawing. So let's go and start drawing. Let the class begin. All right, so we'll start off with the finished product, as I always do with the action pose position. We start off with the finished product so you can see what you're getting into. So I film, of course, the beginning first, and then I film the end over top of that. Let, let, let me say that again. I always feel at the end, I take the end and I put it in the beginning so that you, yeah. So whatever I say after this, I didn't know I'm going to say what I'm saying now. So yeah, action pose position. I don't know what number it is because it's been so long since I've done one of these action pose positions, but I took it to completion and I turned it into one of my characters. And we get into that as we get into the video. So let's get into the video because I still have to do my opening welcoming thing. So that's more time. Let's get into it. All right. Action pose position of the week time. Now, I haven't done one of those in a very, very long time. I've been doing a lot of other things, but not just the traditional action pose position of the week. And uh, I have to go back and look at uh, how I actually presented it. I think I showed the, the finished picture first and then we go, you know, into the, me redrawing it. So I think I'll do that. So when I finish it, it'll be the first thing you'll see for the opening. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a figure, a, the action pose, and I'm going to, yeah, I know it's, it's unfocused because it's just going to act up like that. And then turn it into a character, and then turn it into my character. I don't want to do a Superman or something like that. I need to just do my own characters and promote my own characters. That's something that you guys should be doing as well. If you are doing any kind of action poses or any kind of positions, you should be turning it into your character. Stop drawing Batman and Superman and, and, and being um, you know equipped at drawing them. Start drawing your characters, your people, your background people, so you can be more, more uh, familiar with how they look and turn in every different direction. So, oh, so something I was going to say, yeah. All right, so before we get started on this, I want to give a special shout out to my man, Sam's Art Studio, a fellow um, a fellow art student of yours, Sam's Art Studio. Go check it out. I'm going to leave the link uh, below. He has taken some of the poses that I have drawn and turned it into his, done his own characters. And that's what this is all about, doing that. So he's done that. So go check out his art because he's got some nice stuff going on. Link is below. So, as I say, I want to do this, and I want to um, turn this into one of my characters. So let me get a little test piece of paper here, so I can kind of like loosen up the hand, because this is going to be a side position. This is going to be, I'm going to turn him into the, the clown. This is going to be the samurai clown. If you guys are clown-fearing people, then you might not want to watch this, all right? And it's not going to be a bloody, gory kind of thing. It's just... Um, my character he's not like a blood lust blood lust crazy clown type person so let me get some darkness in here so maybe it'll focus on that so i'm just kind of like loosening up my hand here now i had a uh someone write in and said that they had a hard time turning the character to the side they could draw from the front but they couldn't draw from the side so i'm going to do a, a side picture of the clown so first thing I'm going to do is I want to get some borders so I don't, I don't come out. So leaving some room for the head. So I'm going to drop because this whole, and we're trying, I'm going to try to fill this whole page up. So I'm going to do the torso about right here. I have room for the hand. So maybe drop the torso back, but I have to have room for the other arm. So let's stick it in the middle for now. And someone said about me drawing light. It's like, you draw so light. I draw so light because I do a lot of lines. And once I get to the point where I know um, what I want or the shape that I want, then I'll do a little darker. But if I drew every line dark for you to see, you would you would be thinking I'm just scribbling and scrabbling all over the place. So you have the oval for the torso. And then by doing your center line, if your torso is here, I'll do a quick person right quick, quick man right quick. I'm shocked the camera didn't didn't uh blur on me so this is this is the body this is quick body so you have your center line this is your main point here your torso and your center line so torso 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 however you turn that center line it's gotta it's gotta follow this curve here 
So if I'm if I'm turning it to the right or this way, which is with my right, maybe your left, it's got to go there. If I'm going this way to the opposite side, it has to follow that curve. And if I'm not, if I'm going all the way, like really, really almost profile, it's going to be right on that edge. That's the first step that you do, right? Putting that direction line in that oval. So we're going to go about right here. We're going to go right here. And <clears throat> because we're going to kind of, we'll be looking down on it just a little bit. So I'm going to have my, my V here. So that's your, that's going to be the, that T. If you're going straight across like this, you're doing that T. But anytime the torso bends over, if this is going to take the shape of a more of a V, the more that person bends over, the more of a V that's going to take and the head of the neck is always right here at the top of this V here. That's why I do another V going up and then you put the head on top of it. So if it was here and the head was just down like this, you'd only get this much neck seen and this would be shoulders and this would be your arm here. So once you get that torso straight, the rest is pretty easy. So we have this and then we'll just do the, the mountain here. This is for the stomach right here. So with this and this touches, you want to come up like that. That's the beetle shape. That's the shape I taught myself how to draw so that I can master the torso because I realized the torso is everything. So let's just go down now. You're not going to come down with the waist right here where this the mountain stops. You're going to bring it back a little bit and it depends on how much there's how much turn there is in the character. I could bring it back more. And this is why one, one reason I draw light because I might say, oh, it needs to go way back here or it needs to go up. So I can erase one of the ones that I don't need. So of course, there's my tuna can. So I need to actually go all the way down with this. So, and then we have, this is the center. This is my house here, like that. Now, when I draw slow, I draw tight. So I'm going to probably end up erasing the majority of this and then um, kind of re-loosen it up a little bit. So here's your torso, that's done. Here's your hips or your waist, and this is your hips. So you're good here. Now, see, I brought this up instead of bringing it more housewise. Like that, I brought this up because the leg is going to fit under there. But you can do that. I always do basically the house. This is the point of your house here. Come back and then down like that. And it's basically upside down house. But I'm going to put the leg here anyway. So the leg, one leg is going to come down. And it's just basically an oval. Like that. It may be really fat, but we can do that. So my knee is going to be here. And it's going to be down like this. So the other leg is going to be here which is going to and this is just an oval this is just, just an oval and the other one is going to be more back like this and then he's going to be up on that one foot so that foot is going to come down and bend like that and this foot is going to be coming forward hopefully I won't be going off the page this is why you always want to leave some room for um, going off the page. So that's going to be like in that line. This foot is a little big, but it's the clown. So he's going to have big clown shoes on. Because that's what clowns wear. So that might be a little long, but I'll adjust that later. Maybe, maybe not. So we're going back up in here. We're going to have that V. This is going to curve around. So if this was like an egg, and I showed you guys one day I boiled an egg. And uh, I took that egg and I put stripes across it so that you would see what I mean when I turn it around. That number one is always round. Those, those lines are always going to be round unless you are looking straight forward at it. It's going to be round. So this is going to be all the way around too. But the neck is going to come here, that V here, this point right there. And then you put the head, where are you going to put the head at? So I'm going to put the head probably about right here, maybe tilt it a little bit, but this is just a rough for now. And then connect that neck. You see that you have to have that V and then you connect that neck. This is the back of your shoulder. Your delts are going to come right off of this. And back here, and because you're looking up, so the delts go way back here. The delts start way in your back here. 
and come to the front. So because this is at that angle, we're going to put that ball here. And then I'm going to put that hand. Hopefully I don't run out of room with the hand. He's going to hold, he's going to be holding his sword up. So you're doing a cylinder like this, and you're doing another cylinder like this. I'm going to bring it up. Okay, so this is this. This has to be like this too. And then you're going to have the hand here. But you won't see the hand because that sword will be coming up. So maybe I'll tilt this up a little bit more. So this hand is going to come out. So you're going to have that back, that back circle. You're going to have that front circle here. And then you're going to have this here. And coming up, let's just say about right here. Maybe here. So this cylinder is going to cover this cylinder here. And then we're going to have his hand. He's going to have a nice little, um, I'm kind of pointing at you kind of thing, but with his fingers out or down. And we'll get into that. I kind of like that. So this is my rough. So looking back at that, I'll say to myself, okay, now what can I do? To make it a little more actiony, shall we say? So, what can I do to make it more actiony? So, this is the point where I start adding or taking away from stuff. I'll take to make that waist a little higher. The hip waist, waist. I keep getting throwing those off waist and hips. That. This is going to connect here because this is that it turns into that diamond, and your delts fit. Go kind of got kind of go behind that diamond, like if you have this shape here, your delts go like that behind you, and then your arms will connect there, and this is like your back, and then you have your your traps, your muscles. Here's your neck, here's your head, and then you have those traps, those muscles shoulder muscles which i mean the whole thing is your shoulder but this is actually your traps which go down your back so you have that and then you have your collarbone here and you have your delt here coming off here your bicep and your tricep then it comes around into the chest same thing over here it goes way into the back bicep bicep tricep and then in the your forearm forearm is that the forearm so yeah, so but you're gonna have you have to have this. You have to have this. I had a pen that fell behind my dresser. I wonder is that the pen that I'm looking for? Definitely not this one. Like that. And this is why my videos are so long because I always go into teaching mode which is showing you more than you paid for which is what a teacher is supposed to do a good teacher is supposed to just go you know above and beyond to get the students right so yeah that's that's shapes and it's all just shapes and i teach that it's just shapes everything is a particular shape you break it down put one shape it's like a puzzle Put one on top of the other, put one next to the other, put one right here, put another there. And once you know what shapes you're using and you get used to it, then you'll be able to draw and you'll be kicking stuff out real quick. Stuff the other channels don't really show you too much of because, and I'll stop harping on other channels, but yeah, it's basically they show you how good they can draw and you know, yeah, these guys can draw good. I mean, you're doing 20 some years drawing comics. That's all you do is draw comics. You know, it's like. You have the ability to draw, but really not the ability to teach. You can show me how you draw, but you cannot teach me to draw. Because you have never really had to do that. So, yeah. Bring this in. He's not, the clown is not, you know, big bulky kind of guy. He's, he's your average guy. Great uh, martial artist. Great um, swordsman. When he was young, when he was a kid, he liked um, uh, martial arts and samurai movies, and he wanted to to be that. So he took up kendo because he wanted to be a clown. He wanted to be a clown, and 
the other kids would pick on him so he'd get beat up all the time, which hence he started to take the martial arts to protect himself. And he loved um, um, the sword. He loved samurais. So, yeah, he took kendo and all the kind of fighting things. And he was picked up by the ringmaster to be to, to work in the, the circus. And the circus was basically... Um, a group of international assassins. And I don't know why it's hard for me to talk and draw at the same time. So yeah, so he became a top assassin and then just kind of got tired of it because he did something that, you know, he didn't really want to do. But his training, you know, kind of forced him to do that. But when he kind of snapped out of it, he saw what he really did. And then he just, he left the circus. He's like, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. And the number one rule in the circus is um, once you join a circus, you can never leave. That's it. That's that's the number one rule. So let's see if I, I take this arm a little higher. So he left, and he left with some secrets to the circus because, as I said, these guys were assassins, international assassins, and had done so much stuff. So when he ran off, he took one of the secrets with him that he didn't know he took. So you know now the rest of the circus is after him, along with um, the what I call it, the West Side Mafia because that the secret was connected to them as well. So he's kind of like got double trouble that he doesn't know about. And he just wants to, you know, he just wants to escape. But remember, he this guy is like a, a world-class assassin. So you just don't go up there and just like punch him in the face. You know, he, he knows what he knows. So he's a bad boy. All right, so I'm drawing and not talking. I'm drawing and not talking. I'm I'm talking and and not not teaching. Now the one thing about this is when you doing when you're gonna put clothes on him like I'm gonna put clothes on this guy, it doesn't make a difference if I have every muscle in place as long as you have the outline right to fit where the clothes go, then you're good. Now if you are if you are going to have like short sleeves on or short pants or something like that, then you're going to need, um, you know, your muscle definition. But other than that, now this guy's going to be holding the sword and the sword is going to be aimed at you. So if you put his hand like this, just the outline, but the guard is going to be here. So that saves a lot of, of trying to draw the hand because the sword, I have the sword like coming Maybe I'm not trying to cut his face off and it's going to be more pointed at you. So it's going to be a little shorter. So something like this, something to that point and you won't be able to see, you won't see too much, maybe just a little bit of the back. But if he's going to be, like I said, he's going to be dressed. So yeah. Let's do a little something with this leg. Let's bring this leg out a little bit more. I don't want him to be so far out that he's falling. And I'm going to take this leg maybe back a little bit. So action is, hopefully the camera's not been blurry yet. If I do somebody here, here's his, here's his head, here's his torso. I'm not going to put any detail. And here's his waist. If I put the legs like way out, I mean like just overly extend the legs, then you have more of that action. It's like that anime kind of action, which looks good. So, you know, that's that's just something when you overdo it, like instead of a, a punch that like ends right here, if this is his shoulder and his punch is like here, you know, take that punch and take it all the way back. Make it go way, way back. And then you get more action to it the same way if you put that arm, that hand down here from the punch. Put that elbow way back here. Try to basically try to move your um, appendage, your body part, as far away or as far apart as you can to give it that little more action, -y, you know, that action towards it to make to give it more action. What am I trying to say? And then your lat's going to come down here, your neck is going to be here, your back is going to be here, your chest comes right from under that arm and around. And then as much twist as you can helps. So the crotch is here 
and the chest is way over here somewhere. So you've got that crazy twist here and yeah, the stomach is going to be here and then you have your love handle here because your, your love handles are connected where you have this, this, you have this, you have the collarbone, chest, you have the abs, it's going to come here. I just forgot what I was going to say. Okay, so where this comes down and in, that's your, your love handles right there. So they're going to come up and touch this part that goes right here. So you're going to have two different separate pieces. And this comes in, so does the stomach, because a lot of people will draw the stomach straight down like that. It comes in to give room for that love handle, which is going to be back here, or the obliques. And then this goes down into the crotch. And then it's actually, your leg actually starts here. But, you know, we, we take it all the way because your leg is like this, like that. And then your buttocks are back here. So, yeah, so that's good. That love handle will come down and go right into the crotch. And you're going to have this little piece here. And then you're going to have your legs. So, what can I do with this? So, I said, I'll bring this out. But he's facing me, so I don't want to. So, the knee has got to be actually here. So, Then this is going to be maybe out just a little bit more without overstepping. This one is kind of good. It's going to go back. Maybe not as long because it's going to be like this, that cylinder. And then I'm going to take this guy a little higher and back. And I just finished a little review today of, um, I bought a knockoff um, Toa Heavy Industries, the synthetic human. I have the original one, or the one made by that right company, and I bought a little knockoff and it came today, and I just did a preview of it, which, you know, don't buy knockoffs. But it, it it's good to have some kind of figure that, you know, has really good articulation, so if you can't really see it in your head, the drawings, you can always use that. I mean, it doesn't have to be really expensive. You can pose it, and then you can kind of like, if I set my pencil here, well, you won't see. If I set my pencil here and I want to draw this pencil, but then I say to myself, oh, I don't want to draw it like this. I can kind of stand over it or under it or turn it this way or that way. So you can do the same thing with the drawing figure to um, see how you want it to pose it. And then once you draw enough, then you won't really need figures anymore. Or you won't really need any um, reference because you should have it. It's like writing your name or your signature. You, 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 you've you done it so much that you don't need any reference to, or should I say, make draw your letters, make your letters A, B, and C. When we were in school, they had those boards at the top of the wall, had the A, B, the A, B, C's on it, and the capital, and the, the small, small letters, and you had to practice that. They gave you that piece of paper, and you had to, practice drawing that over and over and over again or writing it over and over again until you had it down so you know you can write anything now with your eyes closed in the dark drunk and that's the same thing with drawing these guys have been doing like these comics for years and years and years it's so, it's so simple for them to do so when you start out drawing for the first time or the second time or whatever and you can't get it and you get mad and you don't want to give up that's because, let's say, when you're comparing yourself to these guys who've been drawing these things for years, when they get in there and they draw that Batman or the Carnage or the Spider-Man or whatever, these guys have been drawing for years. So, of course, you're not going to be nowhere near that, you know, that kind of quality. So, you don't give up. It's just like riding a bike or driving a car or cooking. You know, if you just started, it's going to take you a minute to get it, you know, get it down. So, don't see something that's just incredible and just give up this is why i don't you know do like oh i'm gonna do this picture so good so i can show them how well i draw no i'm just trying to show you the pieces of the puzzle that you can put together so that you can draw and i don't like this leg looking at the monitor i don't like that leg and that's something i always say if you are finished a drawing you're drawing something you're like oh okay i'm finished this is it this is good Walk away from it before you start inking it. If you want to be the type who want to ink it, walk away and then come back 
about 10 minutes or so. Don't look at it. Don't keep staring at it because you, your brain will say, yeah, that's right. That's good. That's right. And then you ink it and you'll look at it the next day and you're like, oh, man, I just messed that up. Why did I ink that? So give your brain a rest from seeing it. And then you should be able to pick out stuff that you think are not right. Because I've done that with a lot of these pictures. And I looked at it the next day and I'm like, oh, my God, what did I just do? So, yeah, just think about that. So I'm drawing from behind because that leg is behind this leg. Still, I think, I don't know, that to me is down too much. It's, it's, I don't know if I put it down like this. It's going back as in it won't really hold its weight unless I take this and bring it down more and then bring the foot, bring the foot more here. And then I like this one better, even though I wanted it back more. How about even at that, it's still not going to work. You have to keep that balance. Unless he's flying or falling or flipping in the air. So I'm going to stay with that one. That one's not too bad. The head is a little big. Another thing you can do too is take your picture, flip it upside down. Flip it upside down. You get a whole new kind of uh, um, look at it and feel to see if it's, it's right. Look at it in the mirror. If you have a mirror, most artists have a mirror like right in front of them on the wall or just, you know, on a little stand in front of them, especially when you're doing expressions and faces and so forth. That is, um, that is uh, whatever I'm trying to say. That's irreplaceable. That kind of thing is irreplaceable. A mirror. So my hands are going to go kind of down. One finger is going to come up. Thumb is gonna go like that. You have your palm, other palm, and this finger is gonna be more like this. So this finger needs to come out more like that, and the other two are gonna go down. So basically, what did I just do? I did this. I have my, your hand is square. Okay, basically, if I chop my fingers off, you see that squareness. So if I, and this is going up, so this is my thumb, this is going up. So if I tilted this little square block down, it would be more like this. What? Are you doing the same thing, Brian? I think I am. It would be more like this if I laid it down. So you see that <clears throat> for those who have trouble drawing hands, you start out with this square shape. Then you know you have one, two, three, four. You have four holes split down the middle. You have two on both sides. And then you have your thumb over under here on this on this side. So you can do like a round, round little piece and you put your thumb like that. But your hand is not flat I know I can't see it because my monitor is probably not going to show me basically what I'm saying is I have a shadow right here and I can't really see in my monitor but when editing it is good if my hand is just straight like that it's going to be flat but if I turn it you see how it just turned around it went round like that so that's the same thing you want to do with this or I'm doing with this hand I rounded it off first then I have my fingers two three four like that and then you have it depends on depending on the view and the word depends it should be used a lot in comics or in drawing because it, it's a big word. angle depends on the color it depends on the uh shape so you can't just say oh this is how you draw a hand or this is how you draw a face and that's a lot something a lot of the artists do and no it's not it depends on a lot of things so you curve it like that and then you're coming down and you have the the thumb well let's do this you're going to have the palm here 
Remember, this is like a board. Your palms are going to be here and there. You can have this one finger up, however. This other one here. This one here. And then this one there. And then, as I said, your thumb is going to come off of this some way. Somehow, depending on... Um, depending on how... Depending on how what, Brian? <laughs> depending on how you're going to have your thumb. So, for a quick rough, this is exactly kind of what you want to do for this. And then once you get that quick rough, then you can go and do your detail with it. But just remember that this is the key point is that this is round. Whenever you do even your fist, people draw square fist, but when you when you really ball that fist up, it, it rounds off. So if you can have more of your stuff more rounded and more angled, then you will have uh, better drawings, make for better drawings. Thank God this didn't go through. This is it's a concept. Um, well, I couldn't focus on it. This is a concept brush. I bought a case of these for maybe five dollars. And I, I keep saying I'm gonna do a review on these pens, but I want to see their strengths and their weaknesses. And this is a brush pen. This is like a fat brush pen, which is this one is I think this is zebra, zebra, and the points on these things are phenomenal. But, I mean, they have their limits, too, versus the um, fiber, fa Faber-Castell, which got crazy expensive because everybody's discovered them now. So, always have a sharp pencil, something my pencil is not sharp. And something for the forearm, so people for the forearm, you have your, you have your delt, you have your bicep, tricep, and you have your forearm. I used to draw the forearm like this, like that, but... And I think a lot of people probably draw the forearm like this too. And that's a that's a weak looking fist, Brian. It's a weak looking fist. Anyway, your forearm, you have you let's see if I can show you. My I'm, I'm starting to work out again. You see how this line comes and it goes back here? So that's one I don't I can't tell you what muscle that is. So to draw this, you draw this. I just lost what I was trying to say. From that angle you're going to have this basically you're going to have this here like this you're going to have this and then you're going to have a separate piece here and this kind of goes into that so whenever you're drawing the forearm you're going to have that muscle that's what i was trying to say and then here's your hand here maybe not that but you have this little piece that goes in just a little bit and that makes for a better looking forearm and then you can have your bicep tricep here tricep so if I'm going to draw a hand, however, I'm going to draw my hand. And it's coming down to the, you have the, your, your palm and your other part of your palm, the fat part of your palm and the thin part of your palm comes up into my forearm. I'll have this like that, the little piece that comes around and that gives you that more definition in your, your, um, your forearm and then your bicep, tricep and your shoulder. So this is what I did right here, but the thumb covers that. It went down like this. Let's go come to another reason why I use the red, so I can use different colors. So the forearm comes down like this, and then it goes around like that. And then there's your elbow there, and then it comes into the bicep here, and your tricep here, and then that. So it does that little thing, but I put the thumb there. I can't see. My lighting is really bad whenever I use a pencil. I can't see. I have to actually lean over to see it. So, But that thumb is covering that up. <laughs> and I can actually point this more to, to me, shorten it to point it more to me. But I'm going to do more detail when I put clothes on this guy. So we have this. We have that. Part that I was telling you about, but that's going to be covered in clothes. Here's the here's the uh, collarbone. Chest could come down a little bit more, and this has got to go up because once you raise your arm up, that chest goes up too because it's connected to this. So it pulls it pulls that chest up, and then you're going to get some lat. Maybe not that much, but anyway, I'm going to um, what cover all this up. So there's this, this, you may see a little calf here because it's almost in the front of you, this center line of this leg. It's 
almost in the front. So you see a little calf over here, come here. Your inside ankle is higher than your outside ankle. This is still a little long for me, but I'm over exaggerating. And I'm looking at this back leg one more time. Let me try one more. Let's try one more. Let's bring it back just a little bit more. So to you writer that wrote in and say, why do I draw so light? This is exactly why I draw light. Do you see those two legs? The more I do it, the more I erase, or the, the less erase, the less gets erased, the, the, you know, yeah, the more that shows. And they were like really adamant about it. Oh, you tell people to draw a light, but then you draw so much that people can't even see what you draw. I'm like, I try to explain to the person exactly why. Let's see. We'll be a little short. It's the same length, Brian. So if this is here, this foot should be on that line. So if this is the foot. This is this is the calf. Uh yeah, that is right. For the most part. But as I said, I'm covering this up. I'm I'm covering this stuff up. So I don't need to have every muscle in place because I'm covering it up. I'll make that bring it out a little bit more. Just because, and then I'll put this down a little bit more. And my foot is going to be on that line. So this is going to be here and here. You're going to have that, that high piece here. And it comes in and into that. Now if we, I could actually tuck this in a little bit and have this come out. Because he's leaning forward just a little bit. And this would be more rounder. But again, clothes are going to cover up all those details. My stomach is flat, which is not good. It should be round. It should be round because this whole thing is round. It should be round just like that. This, I usually suck this first piece in, make it go in at an angle, and then come back out like that. In and then out like that. So it kind of gives him that, that, you know, that he's sucking his stomach in or he's not fat because, yeah. Yeah, because he's not fucked. But again, I'm covering all this up, so I'm drawing crazy dark. And um, I'm not going to touch it with ink or anything like that because I want to I'm gonna copy this and show you the copy and then ink over this. So this is here. So this bicep has got to be up here. I'm going to get some tricep here and here. So this is going to be here, and then there's a split. There's this little V in the arm. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little V when it comes here, and then it goes there. For now, I'll stop playing with the body. I think you guys have got it. Let's just work on this leg. You have this big piece right here in the leg. It comes around, and it goes back. And you have this little V up in here, and this other piece comes around here, and your knee is down here, separate that, and have that calf here. Same thing here, this is gonna go behind that. Here, your heel, come down, draw that line where it bends at the toe, and then there. So, I mean, if anything, I would have turned this more, I would have turned it more, but I'm covering all this up. I think you guys have enough information. So remember this this is gonna this is gonna be in the center. So you're gonna have this here and there because you're kind of looking down just the same way this one is. You're looking down, so all that's gonna get covered up and make that head a little bigger. Where is that center? It's gonna be right here. So do a little square chin here. Jawbone come up, ears about right here up. My eyes are going to be about right here or down more. Nose and your mouth. Your mouth comes, for those that don't know, 
We have your oval head, your chin, your jawbone right here and comes up here. Your mouth is right there on this line. Focus, thank you. Your mouth is right there on that line. So when you when you when your mouth opens up, how can I do that? It's kind of like it's kind of like a what is that? The Futurama drawing. When your mouth opens up, it opens up on that jawbone, that hinge for that that bone, which is like right there. So just remember that that's your spacing. Your mouth is going to, wherever this jawbone ends and goes up, that's where your mouth is. Regardless of whatever angle, if you do it this way and your mouth is here, your jawbone is going to be right here and then up and then here. And then your neck is going to be here. So you have your mouth there. And of course, your nose is not that far under. There's this, I think it's septic. It's called a septic, that little curve under there. And then your nose is right there. Yeah. Sept, sept, septum, septum, I think it is, sept, septic, septum. Your nose is right there. So wherever your mouth ends, if you draw a line all the way across, that's your thing. And your chin is basically, I think it's like right at the center of the eye. And I think this is the perfect kind of face there. And then, of course, you know, your ear is right a little over the eye and right at the nose. That's your ear. So, yeah. And that's, that's a forward face. Now, if you, once you tilt it, and that's why I say it depends. A lot of stuff depends on a lot of things. And this is my mouth right here. And I'm just going to draw this because, as I said, I'm going to draw my character in here. And he is a clown. So his face is a little different. So you have that. I think that head is way too high. Well, that chin needs to come down more. The head may be way too high for this guy. It is. So I say come back later when, and look at it. And I think that's probably the, the main part about a lot of young artists that the drawings are not really that good yet because they're in such a rush to finish it that, oh, I have to finish it now. I have to finish it now. Finish it tomorrow. Draw it. Come back, come back another day. Make it better. <sighs> a little better, a little better. My pencil is not sharp anymore. Yes, I can sharpen it. But, so this is going to be the basic pose. This is going to be the basic pose right here. These go over the, these go over the, um, the, um, chest. So one last look at the monitor. The foot is a little small, which I'm going to make the foot bigger. That's better. It could be, this is, needs to be more rounded. It's just something you have to remember when you uh, do stuff. This needs to be round. But once I put, you know, the pants on them, they'll be round. I may still take this out a little bit more. We'll see. Maybe. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk away from it. I'm going to get something to eat. And then when I come back, I'll be able to see um, what I need to, to improve on more to make it better. Because I want to ink it and take it into a finished drawing. So, yeah. Photocopy this. Maybe not yet. Walk away, come back, fix it, photocopy it, and then ink this. All right. Break time. All right, so I am back. Now, I walked away. I got me some, a little sandwich. Came back. And looked at this and I was like no I don't like that I really don't like that so I went and I redid it real quickly now as I say when I draw um, slowly it's not loose and I know you're probably looking at it and it's like Brian it's the exact same thing not quite it's a little more loose this one has more of a bend to the front the hand is dropped a little bit more um, the head is more forward. You got better shoulders. I mean, it's just a little, it's similar, but it's a little different. And you know, I'm more happier with that one because you don't see as many lines because when I do quickly, I'm very loose. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this one. I was going to photocopy it and then um, 
have the, the before and after, but this, since this is so close, I think I'll just use this as the before. And I'll have that one as the, as, as the after, and you will know once you see this video why the before looks a little different from the after. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw my character. Probably going to be a fast motion because I know this is probably about 40 minutes or more into the video by now. And besides, um, if there's something interesting about clothes or that I need to say, then I'll slow it down and, and um, tell you about that. So let's put some clothes on this guy. First, I've got to get an image of my character so I can remember what he's wearing. Because he has two. He has an old suit that got torn up when he ran away, and he has his performing suit. So I think I will go with the performing suit because it's nicer. All right, let's do this.
All right, so anyway, I can sit here and ink this all day, add a little color and add a little um, texture and blah, 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 but it is very hard for me to see without that light. So I, I apologize in, for now. I apologize for now. I apologize for that light because it is, it is crazy hard to see because it's so dark in here. It's, it's really dark in here and it's, it's really hard for me to see. I mean, don't you gonna say that? It's hard for me to see because it's not enough light. So especially for a small detail like the face and so forth, and that's something I didn't want to get wrong. So this is the Samurai Clown from my uh, flagship comic book, Trials of the Samurai Clown. As I said, he he left the circus, and um, because he was really so sorrowful for what he did, he permanently tattooed his face um, with the sad clown clown with the sad clown face so that uh, he would always be reminded of what he did period because he, he always wanted to be a clown as I said at, you know as a child and he didn't want to bring harm or, or hurt to anybody but what he did was just to him just unforgivable so he left and tattooed his face so this is this is the actual this this is the picture this is the actual colors that it would be, you know, I ended up printing this on a piece of paper, but it had these checkers on it. But so these are the actual colors of the costume and so forth. So I had to get that because it's, it's probably been close to six or seven months since I actually drew this character. And I forgot what he looked like, to be honest. I mean, I have the pictures on my wall, but, you know, I actually forgot what he kind of looked like. So I had to get that. So now you see the colors. So this is, where's the beginning? So from taking a position such as that and then turning it into your own characters, if you have characters, you know, that's why I say don't, you know, turn it into a Batman or whoever may have a sword. Use, turn your own, use that to create. If you have no characters, create your own character, you know, with that. It doesn't have to be something that you put in a book. Just create and then um, you have your own characters. The more you draw, the better you get. This is which I, why I had to redraw that because I really didn't like that. So if I drew it again, it would be even better than this. And if I drew it again, it'd be even better than this. It's just, you have to keep doing it. The more you do it, the looser you become, the better your drawing becomes. So um, uh, let me just show you the books while, before I let you guys go. All right, so this is just a couple of the books. I don't know what the other ones are. So, and this is one I have to get reprinted. This is number five. I'm, I'm getting number six colored. And this is the first one that is in color. So you'll have an actual color comic book. And I have to re reprint these because the printer here does not print to order. You know, I have to print them, order them myself, and then sell them myself, and that's too much trouble. So Kablam, who I use, is basically print to order. But I will leave a um, link to where you can get the books if you like the books. And uh, let me show you the rest of the characters. While I got you, because I got your attention. This is, if you're, if you're new here, if you haven't seen anything about my comic, this is all of the characters. The Samurai Clown, this is the ringmaster who's in charge. You have the knife thrower, the fat lady who has this magical singing ability. The strong man, these are the ninja clowns, which are the foot soldiers. Fortune teller, fire eater. Animal Tamer and uh, oh the, the acrobats there are three there's triplets so I didn't want to get all three in there so basically these are the characters that uh, that are in the book yeah so I, I don't think I'm gonna say anything else probably just more rambling pull back so yeah that's gonna be it 360 book has all these positions in it you know positions you want to try you can take these positions you can um, do one of your characters in the position draw the position put your characters in it and another good thing about this if you are not good at um, uh, uh, inking or shading, just use the book. Use the book. Put some put some shadow. Give me a pencil. Pencil, 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 pencil. That's a pen. That's a pencil. You know, you can just use the book and just say, you know, practice doing shadow. He's writing in the book. Yeah, I'm writing in the book because I have a bunch of them and I can always order and I have the originals, you know, where I have the originals. So, you know, I mean, once you get good enough, you can... Use a, 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 a magic mark, uh, yeah, an ink pen and just, you know, ink this stuff however you want to. And if you use a pencil, turn around and just erase it. Do it lightly and erase it. Say, I don't like that. So this it, it serves like a twofold purpose. You have all these positions that you can try. And then it has all of the, you know, um, 
the videos. These are the, the, the pictures like this from the videos that I've done. And these are big too. So if you have a pencil, again, you know, if you want to try shading, there you go. Put some shading in there. You know, practice your cross hatchings or whatever you want to just tr try. And then, of course, erase, erase. This is pretty good paper. This is this is this is pretty good paper. So when you get good enough, then you can turn around and maybe ink some of them. So yeah, you know, be draw it. And you, and you always have the original, you know, picture right here, so you can draw from it, and then turn around and and ink your drawing. And then, if you like that, you come back and ink in the book. Because once you master this, then, you know, there's no need for you to have to look at it again. So, yeah, good book, Action Pose, Position 360. I'll leave that in the links as well. So, all the stuff is here to help you. You know, this is what a teacher is about, to, to help students to learn and draw better. So, yeah, that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a, a thumbs up and leave a um, thumbs up comment. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, help me grow. Help me grow my wonderful small channel. So, um, and tell a friend, tell a friend. So this is it. This is my rambling hour right here. So I'm not going to ramble. I'm just going to go. I'll see you guys in the next video. Class is dismissed.